Bob, I just barely finished watching Behind the Candelabra right before we started recording. So <laughs> just barely. So I will admit I'm still gathering my thoughts. But my first question, Bob, <laughs> whose category is this? It's a TV movie. Me on TV or you on movies? Uh, yeah, I was confused by that too. Uh, it's HBO, um, which is solid, solid TV. Um, I feel like it's right down the middle, man. We're because it's have like to give it... it's like a movie, movie. Steven Soderbergh, uh, A-list cast. You know, it, this could have been a movie in, in theaters. And I think uh, originally that was the intention, but nobody wanted to make it, so uh, HBO came to the rescue. So it's kind of more movie-esque in that sense. Uh, it is. Uh, in fact, hold that thought. After we talk a little bit more about it, I want us to um, come back and, and reevaluate that that decision. Um, okay. I'll definitely bring that question up. Okay, so um, directed by Steven Soderbergh, written by Richard LeGravenese, starring Michael Douglas and Matt Damon, about liberal. Mostly spoiler-free, I suppose, at this point. Um, critics seem to be quite favorable towards it, and it got a high rating for an HBO movie, so critics and audiences seem to be on board. Yeah. Did you, a, did you do a mini review for this one? I did. I did. Uh, I gave it four out of five. Uh, let me find it here. Let me read what I said. Okay. Fascinating portrayal of a complex yet simple man and his lover with great performances by Michael Douglas, Matt Damon, and Rob Lowe. Uh, it Rob does. makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it does well presenting the story without condoning or condemning any of the particulars. Mm. And I, I stick by that. I really thought uh, Soderbergh did a great job of just like, here's this crazy true story. Uh, in contrast to that, that piece of shit movie I saw last week, Pain and Gain, which was also based <laughs> on a true story, but it was Michael Bay's version of a uh, crazy true story that's not interesting at all and shown <laughs> on the screen. Um, this story was crazy, and I guess part of my issue for not having this be a masterpiece or a, a better movie, like it didn't feel quite like a 5 out of 5 for me, was... Um, the trade-offs there, you, you, you kind of get this sense at the end, like, you don't know what the point was. It's just a slice of life sort of movie. Um, fascinating to see someone have a relationship at a, at, in an age when it wasn't acceptable, but then it wasn't acceptable on a whole other plane for a whole other host of reasons. Um, and then in the end, you're like, eh, interesting. Now what? what? So, I, uh, I agree with you. I actually think that's really more interesting uh, and that that is the effect. It, let, let me explain what I mean. So, okay. um, Liberace at the time, uh, this archetype of flamboyant, super gay, even though he never admitted to being gay, just crazy, extravagant piano player. Yeah. Um, and of course, having a gay relationship at the time that was, you know, scandalous. It's something you definitely did not want to make public, and he didn't make it public. Uh, today. That's almost like you know it, it's no it's no big deal it, it's whatever I mean this could have been uh, it's interesting how this movie in general is almost conventional and almost like uh, also traditional the way this relationship is made to look Liberace's like this archetype like I said for the flamboyant gay character but that stays under control they don't play that up even though they acknowledge it and this story could have been any number of wealthy older men taking on a sweet young girl and then growing tired of her. Uh, Liberace just looks like a regular powerful man taking advantage of a, of a young naive lover in some ways and I think it's kind of mind blowing that this story could be made to be just that same old tale and I think that's kind of interesting Wow that is a good point um, I think the difference though is that there, there was a couple of different scenes and this this isn't really a spoiler but it is getting into a little bit of the nuance um, there's a theme throughout the movie that Liberace wanted this lover of his who was like really could have been his grandson. But to your point, that sort of story happens all the time with older men and younger women. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump style or, uh, you know, <laughs> name anyone in it that's in that category. But in this case, Liberace um, uh, wanted to be like a father figure explicitly, a lover, a family member wanted to adopt him as a son. There was a lot of that in the storyline, which I don't think we've seen in the in the um, rich older man takes on a younger uh, woman storyline. Um, that is almost kind of implied, but then when it's so explicit in this movie as a as a thing that he's trying to accomplish or wanting to get out of life, it sort of makes it extra 
creepy on top of the gay factor, which then makes you like do a double take, and you're like, no, 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 but it's it's okay that it's the, the gay side of this because it's no different than the straight side. But then all the craziness on top of it warps everything together to make you feel like you're being manipulated to to be judgmental in some extra way because of the combination with the gayness of it. Or I, I don't know, it's weird. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll. I'll co-sign that one. Um, uh, so it makes it brings up the gayness as as something that you can you can take a step back and look at instead of just react the way uh, you know someone who's very uncomfortable with the idea of of gayness at all would just be oh that's wrong it can't be it can't be forgiven at all uh, it it puts that out in front so we can take a step back and look huh should I give them more credit because they're gay maybe this is a bad thing to do anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just to clarify a little bit, I feel like, um, you know, I don't have any problem with gay relationships, nor should I, but it's not really. But this movie forces you to draw your own line of judgment. Like, you, you're not going to walk away saying that was totally normal and fine and, and that was an acceptable way to live a life. But you're also not going to walk away and say, because of this, gays are a problem in society um, unless you're really you know you have you could walk away that way and say that I guess but it, it just is weird that it makes you decide for yourself where the line is yeah. and I think it's different for everyone and nobody's gonna want to talk about it but that's what you're gonna be thinking when you're done watching the movie <laughs> sure uh, let's talk about the acting performances what did you think of Michael Douglas as Liberace Lee? I, I loved I thought he did a great job um, he he brought in to the character a lot of charm. He spoke a little bit different. He wasn't as Michael Douglasy as he normally is. I I don't know Liberace that well as a as a personality. He was like my grandparent sort of dude, not something I was interested in. Um, but I could tell Michael Douglas was doing a performance that was based on a a, a real persona, and I thought that was pretty well done. Uh, yeah, I I. I'm glad you mentioned that because I don't know Liberace firsthand pretty much at all. I may have seen the occasional clip of him, like very occasional, uh, and I just knew that he was an extravagant piano player. But but I agree, Michael Douglas. It was obvious that he was doing a great job, even though he didn't know Liberace very well. Uh, I was I was completely mesmerized. Um, I think it was the best part of this whole movie, to be quite honest. Uh, Michael Douglas is usually like this macho alpha male type of guy. Uh, and he plays Liberace with a certain flamboyance. Um, it's never a caricature, though, um, and it's never too much. But it's it's just a completely different person than Michael Douglas usually plays, and it's uh, it's pretty brilliant. Yeah, and I don't I don't know what to call it, but I I want to say there's the the subtle gay factor is is spot on because gays have been portrayed over the top forever, you know, in mm -hmm. in media and Hollywood. I'm thinking of like. Modern Family, or and yeah. not that, not that there's anything wrong with that. There there are plenty of gays who are probably in line with that kind of uh, well. And Liberace would be a great candidate to be over the top with if you right. if you yeah, wanted to be. You could yeah exactly. But I I think Michael Douglas took the harder road, but ultimately the more fulfilling one of of you can't quite tell um, other than you already know what the story is and you know that he's gay because the movie sort of gives it to you up front, but you can't quite tell that he's gay 100% because he's... And, and I think that speaks to how it really is in real life. There's kind of a spectrum of... Um, well, we don't have to go here, but I guess not everyone is a flamboyant gay or an alpha male, right? There's a lot of uh, nuance in between. Yeah, and he wasn't a caricature, and it would have been super easy to be a caricature and just great performance. Yeah, really good. What about Matt Damon? Oh, I thought Matt Damon did a fantastic job as well. I'm a huge Matt Damon fan anyway, so maybe I'm a little biased, but um, uh, he maybe more understated performance because he was just a quiet, young guy who only had a couple of explosion scenes as the, as the story went on, but was kind of in the background for a lot of it at the beginning. But he, he did what he needed to do and didn't overplay it or, or underdo it. I think it was just right. Yeah, I thought it was good too. I'm still processing it, to be quite honest. Um, but I feel like Matt Damon's Scott Thorson is almost like a classic damsel in distress. You know, he's not really an agent of his own destiny. Things happen to him. Um, and uh, again, that's something we don't usually see from Matt Damon. But the more I think about it, the more I'm pretty impressed with that one too. Yeah, um, and we have to mention Rob Lowe because... <laughs> 
<laughs> now, if you want to talk about over the top and really playing it, but you know, this there are people like this, I suppose. It was like this plastic surgeon and also a California diet drug dealer. Um, <laughs> And he, something they did to his face made it look like he had about 10 million facelifts himself. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, we just... should talk about that briefly. Like, the whole movie had some really impressive special effects if you consider how hard it is to um, like show the, people... The makeup design and stuff? Yeah, yeah, before and after plastic surgery. Um, like, Matt Damon with raised cheekbones and a dimple oh, yeah. in his chin, and it was just really funky but still felt accurate because we've seen what plastic surgery can make people look like, good or bad, and the movie sort of accurately portrayed that, I think. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was it was pretty good the way they, uh, with Liberace, pre and post facelift, too. That was impressive. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know, know exactly how to talk about Rob Lowe, but he's sort of creepy but cool. Well, I liked watching him. I don't know if I would want to hang out with him, but... Uh... But he did a good job. Just <laughs> steals every scene he's in. Practice. He does steal the scene because he's he's just got way too much plastic surgery, and he's got this larger than life personality of like, oh yeah, uh, nobody's written anything bad about these pills. They're fine. Take some more, you know. And it's just this really fascinating character. I, I thought he did a great job. Yeah, definite addition. Uh, so what's your rating, Bob? Uh, four out of five. I, I thought it was solid, um, really enjoyed the performances, thought it was an in, uh, interesting story. Um, I guess it, it's, and, and I liked how the director stepped back and just let let it unfold in its own way. But somehow, it, it's not as brilliant in the end as I w would have liked to have seen it be, but I mean, that's a, that's a, a harsh way to put it. But I, it just left me wondering a little bit more, wanting more, um, closure or some stronger point to the thing other than just showing a story for what it is. I don't know. Yeah, it's a movie that I liked a lot but didn't necessarily love and feel amazing about. But um, And I'm still thinking about it. Like I say, I just barely finished watching it. Uh, but I'm thinking around a 4 or 4.5 out of 5 stars probably for me. So right in that same range. Nice. Cool. 